We have guests who are joining us now in the studio. We are live on Spice FM, on KTN Home, on YouTube and on Facebook. We've been talking about this 40-year-old baby. Life begins at 40. It's been there at the same location for the last 40 years. But now, my God, it's not just a center. It's a city. The Saritz, your city. We have guests who are joining us. The CEO of Sarit Center is called Sarit Shah. He's here. <laughs> and the marketing manager at Sarit is called Kizia Owino. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Morning, morning. How are you doing? Good. Very good morning. You're feeling well? Perfect. Karibuni sana. We're going to talk about this entire 40-year journey of uh, Sarit Center and what you've done and then the next 40, what you're looking to do. But before we do that, let CT welcome you with the day's proverb. Every week, CT comes up with a proverb, from, not comes up, researches and <laughs> lines up program, proverbs from a different African country. This week's proverbs are from which country? Uh, this very country that we are in, Kenya. Mm. Uh -huh. Last week, one of our listeners called in and said, folks, why is it that we keep hearing proverbs from other countries? How come we never hear of proverbs from Kenya. So we said, yes, this week we will come up with proverbs from Kenya. Bass. Now, knowing Kenyans as I do, people will be asking their <laughs> question. So w which part of Kenya does this proverb come from? And my response is, well, thank you for asking. What we will do is we will let you decide whether you resonate with this proverb. Whichever part of the country you come from, listen to the proverb and determine whether you've come across a similar proverb from the area of the country that you come from. Mm -hmm. Okay, now on to today's proverb. Try this bracelet. If it fits you, wear it. But if it hurts you, throw it away, no matter how shiny. Mm -hmm. Try this bracelet. If it fits you, wear it. Wear it. But if it hurts, throw it away. Throw it away, no matter how shiny yes. the bracelet is. Mm. You know, some of you any proverb. Well, okay. this is only something like four lines of a proverb. We've had a proverb with eight lines. So this is, <laughs> this is mild. It's not, it's not so bad, eh? No, it's not so bad. You know, there are proverbs that get, you know, give you the impression it's a poem. Uh, and it's a, it's a proverb, but it is a this, proverb. Is, this is it. Have you ever heard this proverb, Sarit? No. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. But Kazia, have heard you it? ever heard this proverb? <laughs> no. I'm actually interested to find out how does it apply to my day-to-day. -day. Now let's get there. What's your interpretation of this proverb, Kezia? Um, I think that which fits works for me as a person, right? Does not necessarily have to work for somebody else. That's what I'm getting from the proverb itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a good interpretation. Sarit? Yeah, I, I think it's do something that looks good on you and is right for you rather than doing that you want to show things mm. Mm. it's not about the shiny bit and then you struggle yeah just do it because it works for you you and your circumstances and your circumstances not freeze and shine mm. ha. oh yeah so this is a proverb against freeze and shine mm -hmm. okay it's our okay Let's talk about this. So you've come with goodies and we'll be rewarding goodies throughout the show today. And you? Yes. There's a Sarit Santa Hamper. Sarit, your city, celebrating our journey together 40 years. The guests are here. They've got some goodies. We'll be giving away two hampers during this hour. And then we'll be giving away two hampers in the cause of the show. So make sure that you're listening to all the conversations, everything that our guests will be saying, because the questions will come from what we discuss. Let's start from the very beginning, 40 years ago, sorry, take us back there. What is it that was happening and who was it that was sitting around a table, maybe a restaurant and they picked up a napkin and they started this idea or whatever. How did the idea of Sarit Center get born? So it's a very interesting journey. Uh, let me go back to 1973. So that's 50 years ago. Yes. Right. We, we had a plot in Westlands. And our spiritual guru from India at that time visited in 1973. So we've got two founders, uh, Mr. Malenkla Rugani and Mr. Bachubai Shah, who was my father. Uh, they mentioned to our guru in 1973 that when you come next, we will move to a peaceful area because there were trucks from Uganda passing 
in that Sarit roundabout. What is the Sarit roundabout? Mm. So a guru said, he put his stick and he said, no, something unique will happen here and you watch. So a few years went and then we started buying the plots, surrounding plots and they remembered actually we were blessed on this land. 1976, one of the co-founders, Manekla Rugani, went to Brand Cross in London. And when he came back, both of them discussed and they said, let's create Africa's or East and Central Africa's first enclosed shopping center. This was the late 70s. Mm -hmm. And then that's how it, the idea was born. And then they started gathering a team of architects, consultants, in 1983, that's when it opened, 27th April 1983. Wow. What was here in this plot in 1973 when the guru and the two gentlemen were sitting? What, what was that? It's our house, our residence. So it is just a residence? Yeah, on a small plot, right? They were all surrounding were all small, small, all houses. And then obviously they, they started buying the surrounding plots to create what is there now. What's the relationship between Manukla Rugani and your father? So they are like brothers. Obviously, both of them have passed away. Mm -hmm. Manukla Rugani passed long 1997. Uh, my father passed two years ago. And, and they are like brothers. And this is where they lived? Yes. So, so we lived here and Manukla Rugani lived on 6th Parklands. Okay. And then the two families, that's how they came together. And the two families from each side, we call the Rugani family and the Shah family. And mm -hmm. that's how they came together mm -hmm. because of the two heads of families and their bonding ensured the bonding also came to the next two generations, which still continues. Mm. So then after you decided make East Africa's first enclosed shopping center, what was the next move after that? What were the first things that you put together on that site? So, you know, the, what it's amazing, the plants that were there uh, were scaled down because of the attempted coup in 1982. Mm. So what, when the phase one was built, at that time, there was supposed to be the retail and four, four ten story office towers together with the retail, but it had to be scaled down. So the office towers had to, the structure is still there. Mm. The foundations are there. Mm. The, the office towers could not be built because of the attempted coup. We had to scale down. The banks got worried. Uh, and then the retail was also scaled down. And the interesting thing was, at that time, uh, the, the town was saying, this is a white elephant. <laughs> so we started with two tenants, mm. just saying, you've built this, mm. right? No one is willing to take up space. And we have two tenants only, Uchumi, and textbook center against what capacity what is the initial capacity it was 150,000 square feet at that time and the two what kind of and the, the two were 10 15,000 for and how long did you stay with only those and, two and so what happened is as they opened we said we have to open right mm -hmm. and then the first year people were asked that please come open shop we guarantee that any loss making in the first year we will reimburse wow. to just get them on board mm. customers were welcomed at the gates that please come shop here and then after a year things just changed mm -hmm. things changed but it was the first year was tough mm. we've had many challenges that have come but right. that's made us bigger and you appreciate things mm. it brings values Mm. How long did it take for it to break even? Because that's a question that I you know people will ask. I mean, if you have put up this thing, you have had to scale back on very many of your initial plans. You have had to launch just soon after an attempted coup and political upheaval and uncertainty. Um, and then you have, well, an anchor tenant called Uchumi, and then you have this other one tenant. How long before this thing started making money for them? I would say five to seven years. Mm. But all this time, how are they financing its operations? 
so it's obviously through equity and also the bank bank borrowings mm. bank debt and equity both okay so um, it's interesting because here you have 150,000 uh, feet, you know, square feet, and you're trying yeah, to fill it. them up at that time. Did you get to a place whereby now every foot then was occupied? Yes. And so how did you get people to now start coming in, renting the space and saying, okay, so there's two of you, jolly old good time. You need to fill it up. How did you now start getting more and more people to come into the place where it was full to capacity at some point? Yeah. So obviously the guarantee that look... You, you, we, we will, we will take care of your losses mm -hmm. in your operate first year of operations, and that was that was a very tough thing to do because obviously at that time <laughs> we didn't have the capacity even to do that. But and what happened is then businesses started opening, mm -hmm. and they suddenly saw the mindset, the more the retail, what do we call the trend started changing because you know you're used to parking on the road, yeah, go to a shop, come out, put your luggage in the car and drive off but you're not used to going into a place you park mm -hmm. go and finish all your shopping go into enclosed place shop come out right and then suddenly you see within a year things started changing mm -hmm. and so many tenants that are that opened and 16 of them are still with us wow. we have now 280 tenants mm -hmm. from small to big 16 of them who have grown with the sarit and you can see there are many household names right KCB being one of them. Yep. Right. And we've got Jaffs, Optical, Bata. They're all how they've all grown hot point, healthy you. The first branch was at Sarit. Mm -hmm. And then they started expanding, right? So they've grown with us. I remember the name was City Within a City. Correct. That's how it started. And uh, the thing I found fascinating was the parking space. And Sarit, if I remember correctly, became the parking lot if you're traveling out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning what? People would go and leave their vehicle? Yeah, there. it was secure. You just park and you travel. When you come back, you'll find your car is secure and you sort of like drive off. Mm -hmm. But the idea, as you correctly put it, was it was so grand. It was so futuristic. It was almost impossible to conceive mentally but then once it came into being then it became obvious in mm. fact you start wondering what did we have here before so it came along mm. and then you revisited that whole plan and you revamped Sarit again now what is it that made you now come into this thinking and saying okay we've had this structure for this length of time let's do something else what led to that thinking? Because the so, old Sarit is not this Sarit. Yeah, yeah. This is a definitely new, improved, revamped Sarit. Correct. So, City, you're right. First, let me talk on that parking lot you mentioned, right? <laughs> 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 you know what happened? Suddenly, you're saying, we are saying uh, so many cars being parked. And customers are saying we're not getting parking. <laughs> 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 and imagine... That's what triggered paid parking. Yes. We were the first ones to bring in paid parking. You know, there was a lot of uproar at that time. <laughs> but exactly what he said. Mm. Because we saw customers are not getting parking. And what people used to do, you're saying going out of town, people used to park and then take a matatu to town. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, they have a job to do. This is secure. It's, un you know, no problem. Go and finish your work, then come back. So that's how we had to start that we had to make that tough decision of paid parking mm. for the customers mm. right so if we go back to i know you said we've revamped yeah yes if <laughs> interesting is in between that in 1995 so we've had this the third phase which we've just done in mm -hmm. between the first and third we had in 1995 we had a second phase that we've just yes. done mm. right and again that was a was we had traveled I think Nitin had traveled out of uh, to London and Singapore and we saw that cinemas, food court, that's the trend out there. Mm. So in 1995, we decided actually we need to expand and cater for food court, the cinemas, gym. 
And again, that was again, we saw the trend and we had to then reset again. Yep. So that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And then 2015, again or 16, we said, okay, we need to now change the game again because last 10 years, how many malls have come up if you see? <laughs> Karen, Thika Road. They're, they're everywhere. Every yes. And you see what if you've got land, you've got money and you want to go into property, there was a, those few years where you just see malls just sprouting malls. everywhere. Yeah. Yep. So again, we said, look, we need to again be the game changer. Mm. And again, we had to bring in some international architects and we, we gave them a brief of, again, you see what's critical, as you said, is the vision and the brief has to be from us yeah. or the owners. Mm. You can't expect someone and then they can make it, they can, they can bring it alive for you. But the vision and, and what we want has to be from, from us. Mm. It has to be. Mm. Was it still aligned, this phase three in 2016, was it still aligned with the 1973 dream? So it was part of the city within a city. Mm -hmm. But this time what we went is when we did phase three, when we started conceptualizing, we gave a brief of city within a city. So where we've got now even a conceptual idea for phase four, five, six as well. So we gave them a brief of for the next 20 years or 30, 25 years that mm -hmm. that's what we want to say the city within a city. Obviously, now we say it's your city. Yeah. Because you know, the, the, the thing I find interesting, I did a little walk about in Sarit, uh, I think two weeks ago. I prefer Sunday mornings. There's no one. And I got lost. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got lost. Well, within the mall itself? Yes, yes. I had time on my hands uh, and I was walking. So just walking up and down, escalator here. Yes, just seeing uh, the, the, this thing. And I got lost mm. completely. I actually had to ask a security person, uh, excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> where the end result meets over there. <laughs> so I was actually very near the end. So, but in the process of getting lost, I was actually fascinated mm. by what I was seeing. I'm saying this because I hadn't been to Sarit in a while and my mind went back to malls that I had seen in Cape Town in South Africa. Again, you could get lost, but oddly enough, Sarit was bigger than some of those malls that at the time I was there, I thought were big. Yeah. But what I also found interesting was that certain institutions had moved. For instance, I'm a client of Absa Bank. Where they were before is not where they are now. <laughs> there were other banks that I had never seen before, and I found them there. So, so I'm saying, for me, it was, a, it was a Sunday. I spent an hour. <laughs> Eric, why are you laughing? <laughs> Am I not allowed to get lost? <laughs> because I want to actually to juxtapose what you're saying, yes. to, uh, the question to Kazia. Yes. <laughs> One of the big, you know, conversations that has happened after this revamp of Sarit, mm is how big it is mm. and how people talk about how big it is is how you get into sarit and you have to look for somebody to actually show you how to get out mm. right that's been a conversation mm. how just tell us because you of course you've interacted with all these stories yes. what is it that people have said about this new launch um so in terms of getting lost mm -hmm. yes uh, there are many who have entered one entrance and gotten out of kangem <laughs> at some point <laughs> 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 but, yes, to mitigate that, yes, um, initially it was to make sure that the shoppers actually are able to circumnavigate the whole mall and experience what we actually have to offer. Yeah. But with time, yes, customers have also become very intelligent. So we have also gotten a step further where we now have wayfinders, right? Mm. So the wayfinders are like uh, big computers where you can actually search where you are at. Mm. It tells you where you are at first. Mm. Then it tells you where you want to go, right? Mm. So we call that the wayfinder. Or alternatively, yes, we have the maps, the Sarit maps, where you can actually get them from our website, um, www.saritiacity.com, where you can actually search where you want to go based on your location. Or even around the mall, next to those maps, we actually even have a QR code. Mm. So for the savvy, for the savvy shopper, 
right? However, for you, Charles, yes. So, you have the option of <laughs> mm. you know, everything was making, was making sense until you go to QR code. <laughs> QR code. <laughs> <laughs> now, to help you <laughs> in your next visit, yes. Our customer care desk is located on mm. ground floor, mm. and from the customer care desk, you can actually be uh, directed anywhere. Mm. However, if you look at any junction, right, any decision point next to the lift or as you enter the mall, at the top there we have uh, wayfinders yep. and um, or other directory boards that actually direct you to the particular destination you want to go, mm. right? Yeah. So all you have to do is uh, look at the directory, mm. right, uh, look at the floor that you're on and it will take you there. Mm. Or our guards for that human touch. Yeah. Yeah. Those ones are always very helpful. Yes. Or even those direction boards, because now at the ramps, at the stairs, at the lifts, you'll see it written and it tells you when you go up, this is what you'll find up there. Mm. Uh, this is a food court up there, the cinema is on this side, and it's, it helps. But also I think the fact that it's very well lit. One yes. of the things that you notice about Sarita is once you get in, it's daytime. So you actually don't realize that you've shopped for so long. Hmm. It's, it's part a, of the strategy, isn't it? It's, okay, yes. it's, it's adventure friendly. <laughs> yes. I did not mind the getting lost because even when I was shown the entrance, I didn't go to. You the didn't entrance. go immediately. I, I immediately went back. I, went, I had okay. I went back to where I was before. Mm. The the process of walking through Sarit is actually very interesting. I I I, I found it interesting. Just the visual effect of the shops and where they're situated and, and, and how they've arranged their products and, and, and everything around it. As I said, I very rarely go walk about shopping. I went to get something specific and I ended up on that walkabout. But mm. Yes. Mm. I, I didn't go for a walkabout. I actually went to get something specific. My own doing. <laughs> I am realizing that it wasn't. It was mm. it was <laughs> that was by design. <laughs> When Sarit so is saying that, is working. <laughs> so when you, when you brought in these international designers in 2015 and you told them, okay, let's think. This is what they came up with. Correct. We want to contain, to make sure that this person is actually here longer. They interact, they move from one shop to the other. Mm. They meet other people. They want to come back because they saw something. So it's working. Mm. Let's now talk about how we can reward two of our listeners and viewers this morning. You've got two hampers. Right? Yes. And we want to reward someone after we come out of the traffic break. We're going to look at traffic and weather. When you come out of the break, we want to hear from you. 0719 012 I'm going to repeat the number. 0719 um, Do I have the pleasure of asking the question? Yes. Okay. This morning, we're celebrating Sarit, your city at 40. Sarit Shah is the CEO of Sarit and Kezia Wino is the head of marketing. And they're here telling us the entire journey of Sarit and the thinking behind that entire journey and what then Sarit will be looking like some 20, 25, 30, 40 years from today. 1973, some two gentlemen sitting somewhere in a home think and they're talking to a guru and they're like you know what we want to transform this city and we want to see what we can do 1976 they decide you know what let's actually think of starting a first enclosed shopping center for eastern africa a couple of years later on the 27th of april 40 years ago sorry center is launched and uh, they had retail facilities, they got tenants, and they did business, and people came in. And some several years later, phase two of Sarit Center, where they revamped it, and they decided, okay, let's add cinema and cinema experience. Let's add a food court where people can sit and enjoy a meal together, social amenities. Let's have a gym, and this happened in that phase two. Phase three, a couple of years ago, way hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's basically become sarit your city so more parking spaces available more retail spaces available more kind of amenities and there's something else that is happening and kazia will tell us about it which is even meeting events and expo facilities yeah big big thing the question that we asked before we end the break in is you to tell us the years that these things happened when was sarit center launched question and then when was the first phase which year when was the second phase which year okay phase two which year phase three which year i've got mm -hmm. callers on the line many let's see who wins this particular hamper simon in nairobi good morning 
Good morning. How are you? Better than you. Mm-hmm. Uh, they said they did a, a, a meeting in 1995, mm-hmm. if I'm not wrong, mm-hmm. and then I think the, la- the last thing they did was 2016. Those were the dates I had, if I'm not wrong. Those are the dates you had? Yes. Stay on the line, we'll tell you whether you're right. Gregory Nairobi, good morning. Morning, Eric. Very well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, which years? Phase one, phase two, uh, phase three? I'll go with 83, mm-hmm. 95, and 2016. 83, 95, and 2016. Okay, just stay on the line. I've decided to pick one more. Well, this is Winnie from Eldred. Winnie. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. And yourself? Very well, thank you. This, the years... The year is 27th April 1983. First, it was conceptualized in 1973. Mm. Um, then it was built in 27th April of 1983. The second phase was in 1995. And the third phase, he said, was 2015-2016. It wasn't quite specific. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Those three. Correct. Who's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> They're all right. They're all right. Because, yeah, the, the last two dates, that's when we conceptualized. Mm-hmm. Uh, phase 2, 95, opened two, three years later. Phase 3 conceptualized, 2017, opened two, three la- years later. So they're spot on. They're all, all both of them three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So congratulations, Winnie. Congratulations, Simon. Congratulations. Those years are not hard to remember, right? You see? Actually, no. Mm. It means these are people who pay attention. Mm. Yes. And they focused on this. Yeah. We've had situations where you ask a question and you actually wonder whether the person actually had the question correctly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm. Yes. They were paying attention. Okay. Mm. But sorry, somebody said it's not very clear which what happened in which year. In the 95, 97, 2015, 2017, 2019. Just clarify that. Phase two, when was it started or when was it launched? So in, in terms of the idea started, as I said, from 95. And then 19, it was op- fully opened 1999. Okay. Phase three, we started 20, 2015, 2016 conceptualizing. We started construction 2017. And 2019, so this was just six to eight months before COVID, we opened. Hmm. Uh, just before. And, and then obviously, due to COVID, certain tenants got delayed in opening. Hmm. Because, you know, you generally open and you, all the tenants don't open at the same time. Some are fitting out late, some are early. So 2019 is actually when, when the first tenant around June opened in phase three. Yeah. So, Kizia, tell us about the Expo Center. I mean, we know about it and can never really get in because it's always packed, right? Yes. <laughs> because it's always booked <laughs> into infinity. Yes. So what was the idea behind that? And then also looking at the uniqueness of other things like the rooftop garden. Mm. You know, when, when we talk about a shopping experience, it's like you're going to shop, but then there are things that communities of people can do as well. Yes. So what was the idea behind the Expo Center? So just to build on what Mr. Sarit has mentioned, yeah. um, the Expo Center is an idea that was also brought from what had been seen out there mm. in the in the European market. Um, and they brought it here to make sure that they are catering to those shoppers or to those businesses that would not ideally get um, a store in Sarit but would also get the opportunity to expose their businesses through a particular medium that was the Expo Center. So it was first located on first floor 
mm. right? And we had a series of exhibitions that catered to particular items yeah. or particular specialties. So you'd find that um, if you are in the homes and gardens and you want to specialize in that particular field when it comes to decorating your home, uh, furniture, um, plants, we have that particular event that is catering to that speciality. Um, like this, this, this month, we have the medical uh, expo, mm -hmm. where it caters to all things medical. We are talking about pharmaceutical. We are mm. talking about um, 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 uh, gadgets um, as well as equipment that cater to the medical sphere. Right. So the expo is has now evolved, and it's currently at the second floor. Right. And we are talking about a pillarless. Um, expo where events are held. We're not just talking about um, specialty events, but also weddings, corporate events. And we also even have meeting rooms mm -hmm. where people can actually come and work as well as hold meetings mm -hmm. and you can hire them out. So at Sarit, we're giving an experience not only that is tailored to retail, but we are also looking at other aspects that can also cater to speciality in terms of events. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's an interesting one. So is it like co-working spaces are available? Yes. Hot desks? We do have we do have a meeting area where you can actually have work from there as well as hold even conferences or even small meetings that you can also come on board on. Mm. Yes. The rooftop garden. Yes. Why? With trees. I mean <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. So yeah. Dining, you know, with foliage. But look, why what is the idea behind that and what can people enjoy yes. uh, with that? So, rooftop garden, as you know, every phase, as, as even you, all three of you have mentioned, we've had something unique. Mm -hmm. So, in this one, we wanted also, when we built phase three, another unique feature. Mm. And we said, let's have rooftop garden. The, the beauty about the Kenya weather, it allows us to have such a design. Yep. Mm. If you're in other countries where you've got six to nine months of winter, right so so we said we need a unique feature and then we've got <clears throat> so we said let's do a rooftop garden with some restaurants where people can enjoy the fresh air you can sit enjoy have a nice meal with your family you can do meetings right and mm. we thought that the kenya weather allows this and and the beauty is imagine we opened this just before covid yeah. but you know covid time People wanted, I mean, you wanted fresh air, right? Yep. You wanted to be outdoors. Right. Mm. And then we, we said, no, we need to have some indigenous tr or some trees there, rather. And then, so we said, which other building has got on the second floor trees? Truly. Yeah. So the structure and so much design work went in it, but we wanted something unique. Mm. And, and you can see it, it's, it's picked up quite well, mm -hmm. doing very well. People enjoy, families enjoy. You can choose the different types of cuisine. So it's it, it, it's worked out really well. Yeah. Parking, you also expanded parking. So from the initial parking where City would leave was Pujo for <laughs> four or five <laughs> and travel <laughs> and come back. It was a five or five. It was a five or five. <coughs> it was a bigger one. Get it right. was like, come on, you know. <laughs> sure, you mean. What do I take you for? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> when City would leave his pigeot and go around and do his biashara within Westlands and then come back and, you know, him, he would drive his pigeot up country. Now there's more parking spaces. There's a front side, there's a back side, and then there's the entire parking silo. Explain the thinking behind that. It's a lot of parking space. So, you know, from, from day one, we've thought that if you don't have adequate parking, how you, mainly you need to cater for customers. If they can't park, how are they going to come and shop? So we've always had that, that thinking that parking has to be adequate. And then obviously, we, when we built phase three, so we now have 1,600 car park spaces. Mm. And what we said with, with the current infrastructure of Westlands and so much traffic everywhere, you can't just have one parking, one entry and one exit, or two entries and two exit of the same place. So we said, round the property, We've got three different types of parking. And, and that's what we, we said that to make it convenient. So customers, depending on which direction they're coming from, they can pick the parking that's easier to the, for them to come in and they can just park there rather than, you know, sometimes within that roundabout, you can spend half an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
right? So mm. we need to make it very <laughs> friendly for a customer, whether it's coming from Brookside or let's say from Parklands or from Waiyaki Way, they, go, they get their nearest parking. Yeah. And then the parking silo, which again is, is 10 floors of parking. And again, that was conceived because the four retail, the, the, the four retail floors, or from low ground to second, we said that the parking silo connects to each floor. So now what people do, having <laughs> learned the hard way, <laughs> they know we want to go to the expo center, for example. Yeah. So you go, the you go to the second floor and park there and enter. Mm. Mm. Right? So it's, it's basically all this is just for the convenience of customers. Mm -hmm. mm. And to ensure that for them to enter the mall, park and enter is very easy for them yeah. and friendly. Your modern customer, the retailer, the person who's taking up space at Sarit, uh, has also, you know, changed with time. Nowadays, the expectation is that you are also going to support me get business and get food traffic. So I guess that falls squarely on, in your, on your laps, Kezia. Yes. Because as head of marketing, it's your job to make sure that there's a proper footfall into Sarit Center so that those people can then go into the shops. Now, what is it that you do to... A, encourage the food traffic, encourage people to come in, and how do you work with your retailers mm. so that then this is all seamless? So the beauty about Sarit is that we are a community. And when I speak about community is that uh, we are a collaborative community with our tenants. So we understand our tenants' businesses, we understand the tenants' consumer, as well as the fact that we also know our brand positioning, being the largest enclosed mall in Eastern Central Africa, catering to a particular consumer, right? And we have nine consumer portraits that we actually speak to from a larger perspective. So we see, we merge, we have working sessions with our tenants and we try to figure out how can we actually make sure that these shoppers are the same, same people who are coming to make, sh to make sure that they are coming not only to experience the mall, but also to make a purposeful purchase into the mall. So it's collaborative and media initiatives such as where we are at right now also collaborate and make sure that we're actually putting uh, footfall or pushing footfall to the mall. So we look at events, we look at marketing collaborative um, efforts, as well as um, any, any, right now the consumer is very... Um, user generated right and you'll find that they're looking to make sure that their their hobbies as well as the reasons as to why they come to sarit are in line mm. so we've made sure that we are matching that to all our consumers mm. Mm. yes there are different kinds of consumers like you've said yes. different profiles of consumers now the one that you know confounds many is this two the millennials and the gen z yes their needs their shopping their habits have been different how have you noticed that i mean how do you engage with that now we you can actually follow us on social media we are on TikTok, we are on twitter we are on instagram as well as facebook and you'll find that different communications actually caters to this audience and from us from a marketing point of view, we've also learned from them. So memes such as I getting lost in the mall, we actually encourage um, that usability. Why? Because these are young people trying to figure out where can they get their latest uh, shoes from Clarks, for example, or Sketchers or Mr. Price. And we build on that because as they make content, we're also learning from them and they're telling us what they want. Mm -hmm. So we also have a listening ear mm -hmm. because they are the future of the mall. So this Shop and Win um, mid more campaign yes. happening sa soon, happening now. Yes. What is that all about? You know, there's a Sarit song and there's a coffee yes. table book. Many exciting things happening at the same time. Yes. I mean, can it get more exciting really? What, what, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what is happening with this? So Sarit being an innovator, a retail leader, we have actually come up with the first mid-year shop and win campaign it has never happened before in kenya because most campaigns actually do happen in december so we've shifted that to make sure that we are celebrating this journey with our shoppers our shoppers are our first our first concern right mm -hmm. and we we know right now that this is the right time for them to actually experience shopping on a whole different level so we have the shop and win campaign where all you have to do is spend 2040 
to get into the draw we have daily giveaways every day between monday and uh monday to monday mm -hmm. apart from thursday when we have the weekly grand draw the weekly draws and every week we award uh, different shoppers based on the the vouchers and the giveaways that we have planned out for that week then we have the grand draw that is going to be held in august where one person is actually going to walk away with a brand new proton saga mm. zero mileage and uh, a cruise trip courtesy of holiday bazaar and royal caribbean to singapore among other shopping vouchers that we've lined up from our sponsors so okay. we are gifting back mm. uh, this birthday celebration we are gifting back to them yeah. um, we also have a song uh, sarit song where shoppers can actually listen, download and dance to a tune that will be carried on for years to come. And then of course now we have the coffee table book. Some of the highlights that Mr. Sarit and I have actually spoken about are all outlined there. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about now the the history of the two families, yeah. the Shah and the Rugani family, the different businesses that they've been in the the concept the concept the 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 thinking behind now phase one phase two and phase three and even the 20 year uh, master plan yeah that is scheduled so city wants to download and dance to the song yes I mean, make sure <laughs> capture all of that on camera so people can come and shop at any outlets in Sarit. Is yes. That what we're saying during this, any outlet where you spend 20, 40, not selected ones, but any outlet. Oh. Any outlet. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So our tenants are giving back to the shopper and we are also giving back to the shopper. This is our celebration and we are passing it back to you, the shopper. Something I'd like to ask. <clears throat> if someone wants to occupy a space in Sarit, uh, right now in this country, one is spoiled for choice if you're looking for not necessarily a mall, but a place to begin your business. So what exactly do you offer this person who wants to occupy your space? Who, what is this thing that you're giving them that someone else cannot give them? Mm. <clears throat> so, very good question. <laughs> so, <clears throat> if you see, our, our, our core strength is the tenant mix we have at Sarit. That's our strength. And I appreciate all the tenants we have because we've grown together with the tenants, as I said earlier. Mm. <clears throat> What's important is, obviously, we bring the location, the variety in the mall. <clears throat> we, we are very careful in our selection of... We have to see what the market wants. What will our nine customer portraits buy? Mm -hmm. Then based on that, we have to say that this tenant would be ideal. Right? And then that's what we offer. So we get applications every day that look, please, we want space from 500 square feet, 200 square feet to 20,000 square feet, 200,000 square feet. But we have a leasing strategy in place based on our profile and and that's what we are very particular on that we select the tenants carefully and we believe that they will add value to everyone around okay so if for example <clears throat> uh you for example i just give you an example we've got fashion stores maybe mm. of more than 30 we've got so many mobile shops but where we believe that a particular category can have multiple, then it's fine. But there are certain categories where we can't have multiple. Okay. On average, how many people come to Sarit every week? Which days of the week do you have the largest number? In a year, how many people walk through the gates and the doors of Sarit? So, <clears throat> daily average. Mm. Daily average, we're now at 25,000. Mm. approximately mm. that's the daily average if we look at the weekdays weekends are greater saturday sunday saturday being now the highest mm. uh and followed by the weekdays so weekdays so it averages out to twenty five thousand a week that's Good a average. high number twenty five thousand daily Day weekly Day. average mm. Mm. that's a very high number very many people mm. Mm. That includes city. 
Yes. Doing his laps. <laughs> and me as well. <laughs> and looking for parking. Mm. And all those who are coming in, not looking for parking because there are no parking spaces available, but looking for where you parked your car. <laughs> Which is a good thing also because you... And like you said, there's an app, I mean, there's a QR code, mm. there are very many ways in which one can tell their space. Mm. One hour is a short time for such a 40-year conversation. <laughs> but our one hour is up, and we thank, thank you. you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, Sarit, you have a question that you'd like to ask one person, will win it on social media. What's the question? What do they love about Sarit? What do you love about Sarit? Mm. Okay, and Sarit and Kazia are then going to pick Spice.